Welcome back, traders and investors. We have John Thomas on, and he goes by the Mad Hedge Fund Trader. John, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you this morning? Good, good. I was just uh, taking a look at uh, some of your uh, predictions for the market. Yeah, you just got to kill the sound on that. Uh, oh, uh, say again, I got confused because the audio came on your website. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of like when you call in on the talk radio. They're like, oh, please turn down your radio. Uh, but anyways, boy, you got some big predictions here. And uh, first, let's talk about the bond market. You, you're looking for the top in bonds for the year, sell rally. So you think interest rates are going up? Uh, you know, I think we got the big short squeeze last week. All the hot money was forced out of the market. Everybody lost money. And now we're done. You know, now we basically want to sell rallies. I doubt we'll get through the 240 yield on the 10-year yield, the 10-year yield that we saw last week. So, yeah. And, you know, not only do you just want to sell treasuries, you want to sell the whole fixed income space, junk bonds, munis, corporates, uh, emerging market debt. The whole package. Uh, I think uh, money rotates out of bonds back into stocks now. Okay, so that is your your prediction. And actually, uh, my partner Dennis has uh, been seeing it in some of the uh, preferred stocks. People are abandoning these uh, fixed rates and going for the growth. Anything that was a reach for yield is going to get tossed. High yield stocks, utilities. Uh, emerging markets, emerging emerging stock markets will get dumped because they always suffer when our interest rates rise. It sucks money out of emerging markets into developed markets. Okay, all right, that definitely. So yeah, we're at a massive sea change for the whole year right now. Dollar goes up, yen goes down, gold down goes down more. You know, gold doesn't do well in this situation either. Uh, so yeah, it's it, this is your major rotation for the year happening right now. All right, stocks will grind up for the rest of the year. Looking for the S&P cash to go to 2,200. Uh, what are you basing that projection on? Well, after having negative growth in the first quarter, we'll then have four, three quarters of 4% a year positive growth uh, and end up maybe up 3% on the year. That's why the big institutions don't want to sell stock. They're afraid they'll be left behind at the station like they were last year and chasing for the whole year. Uh, so everyone's afraid to sell. Uh, we can't get corrections. Most we've had is a 6% down draw this year. Uh, that was in February. So, um, yeah, you know, maybe we'll go sideways, as this, uh, you know, for the summer with a small upward bias. But we're setting up for a real upside explosion in the fall, a lot like we had last year. Okay, you you say by the age here, and I, what I assume you mean is that we have an aging population here that needs to be cared for and that there are companies and sectors that you would focus on in order to capitalize on this trend? No, what's happening here is that the market is discounting five years ahead when the baby boomers are gone as a factor in the market, and you then have the Gen Xers uh driving the market, and um, that means we go from a demographic uh, headwind to a tailwind. That means uh, wages start to rise, uh, asset classes accelerate to the upside, uh, and we ha basically have another golden age. You also have multiple technologies all kicking in at the same time going exponential, you know, healthcare, technology, energy, and so on. Uh, so what? Well, that's a much longer term call. Uh, yeah, well, I see your longer term call, and I, I don't know if you got an extra zero in here, but uh, no, I don't. Two hundred thousand in the Dow. Now oh, come you on, know, how are we going to go to more 200? than ten times from where it is? And you know, I've already lived through a couple of these. You know, this is what the market did from nineteen eighty three to nineteen ninety. You know, the Dow went from six hundred to ten thousand. Uh, the Nikkei went from. Uh, uh, 3,000 to 39,000 in the 80s. I was trading that. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, you know, it only looks outlandish if you compare it to today's numbers. But, you know, when you hit hyper-growth periods in the economy and technology, 
This is you get hyper growth in corporate profits, and that's what we're heading into. You know, this is the boring decade. The exciting decade is the next one. Really? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Hurt Capital uh, is coming in here with a question, a specific question uh, regarding the TNX, and that's the uh, Drexion Small Cap Bull 3X shares. And uh, he was just noting here that uh, it's bounced from the 200-week uh, uh, moving average last Thursday. Does uh, Do you see an impulsive move to 4% uh, where there could be some more uh, resistance? Are you looking at the TNX at all? Uh, you know, I stay away from the triple Xs because um, they're really intraday trading instruments. Uh, you get them wrong, it costs you a fortune. The managers are taking out a ton of money. Uh, and um, It's a 10-year uh, treasury. It's tough yield. to catch the volatility, unless you're sitting in a pit or on the floor of the exchange or something like that. Okay, okay, the 10-year treasury. The, you know, the answer is, are stocks going to go up? Yeah. Uh, will a TNX capture it? Yeah, if you get it on the right day. But also remember, in this market, um, you know, over the summer, we may have really long boring periods that's what the vix collapse is telling us and uh t you know tnx's don't do very well in that situation because they have such a high cost of carry correct okay all right so what what uh you mentioned them again or could you mention them again just the the sectors that you're uh looking for to, to lead the market higher to 2200 by the end of the year and dow 200,000 by 2030 where where should be investors uh, looking to put their money well, for the rest of this year, if interest rates have peaked uh, and are on the way down, you want to own banks up the wazoo because banks do better from a positive yield curve, a steepening yield curve. They've had a terrible first five months. Uh, it would be a great time for them to play catch-up now and uh, lead the index higher. And you can buy the whole batch, J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, City. Uh, as well as the regional uh, banking ETFs. Th those will do very well. Tech is always a winner in a rising market. Uh, expect more volatility, but uh, you know names like uh, Google will probably lead there. And uh, Apple probably is in the process of peaking out now. Could hit 700 by the fall when they launch the iPhone 6, but I only think there's another 10, 15% tops left in Apple. Uh, you, you don't want to own that stock after the products have been released. That's that's been the lesson of the last five years. Okay. Uh, so yeah, th those are your leadership areas. Okay. And what sectors to or individual stocks to avoid? Uh, I would be avoiding um, emerging markets, uh, which had a great second quarter, uh, and I would be avoiding. Uh, some of the higher risk momentum names, which got absolutely decimated. Uh, this next leg up is going to be um, uh, a leg characterized by old, boring, higher dividend stocks. Industrials, Caterpillar, uh, General Motors, the whole auto industry will do well. Uh, but some of your specky, lower quality names, uh, you know, like like some of the riskier biotech names, uh, people got burned on those. You probably want to avoid and go with quality. This is going to be a quality big cap rally in, in the second half of the year. Okay, and uh, so if if people have money now and they want to put it to market, you're basically you're not looking for any kind of substantial pullback. People are just going to have to buy into this rally. It really is a close your eyes and buy type of market. I know that's the trader's worst market. Uh, no one wants to be caught buying at the top. Uh, and for that reason, a lot of money is out of the market now. They're waiting for their 10% correction. Um, but they've been waiting for two years. And, you know, if anything, the fundamentals are improving. So at the end of the day, you just have to look at the GDP growth um, and focus on that. Uh, you know, like my friend David Tepper said, uh, you know, if the growth comes through at the end of the year, we're fine. Uh, if not, <laughs> we're not so fine. Okay. All right. Uh, nearing the end of our show here, any final advice for traders slash investors uh, to take care of, uh, to take advantage of your bullish uh, pronostications? 
Well, you can always go to my website at www.madhedgefundtrader.com. We have a ton of research people can read there for free, um, as well as our subscription products. Uh, you know, watch the data. It's all about the data. Um, you know, stocks are not that expensive. We're really in the middle of a historical uh, multiple range. You know, we're right around 16 now with a historic range of 9 to 22. So uh, I think this bull market, you know, uh, could go on for several more years. Uh, you know, we'll probably grind up to uh, – 20,000 in the Dow by 2020, and then we explode to the upside. Okay. All right. We've had uh, John Thomas on the line with us, He's better known as the Mad Hedge Fund Trader, and uh, glad to have you on. We've had uh, some some bears come on the last couple of days, and obviously the market's been working against them, so it's good to hear your opinions. We'll keep an eye on this, and certainly like to have you on again. Yeah, bears have a lot of free time these days. Nobody wants to talk to them. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, thank you. We'll talk to you again Good soon. Good luck. Okay, thank you.